What's going on, everybody? Hopefully your week is going well. We're going to go ahead and knock out the all-exclusive 10,000 PSA club member list. We do got uh, one, two new inductees. No, three new inductees. Three new inductees into it, which is... We're getting up there. We're definitely getting up there on the numbers. Um, some of them is going to be a little bit shocking. So you guys will probably be like, yep. And then also, I need your help. If you guys are pull or send stuff off, getting stuff back from PSA, and you see the pop level is high, hit me up in the comments or email me, uh, DM me, whatever it is. Just say, hey, add this to the list. You know, it's going over 8,000 now, something like that, because it's going to get a little bit harder now. Once PSA does maybe open back up value, we'll start seeing a lot of other things shooting up, like uh, certain Herbert rookies, Burrow rookies, stuff like that. There, that are up high down price because nobody really was setting the minute, you know, $100, $150, $200 levels. All right, this is the part of an article I want to talk about here, done by Rich Mueller. Um, in the first three, this all comes out of gemrate.com. You can see right here in the first three and a half weeks of 2021, uh, 627,000, uh, trading cards were graded. That's between the three companies, PSA, SGC, and Beckett. This is what I want to talk about. PSA's done over half a million. Now we still probably during this time, I think it was like five or six days still left in a month. That's why a lot of times I don't run my numbers to like the third, fourth of, uh, the month, maybe a little bit after, depending if it was a weekend, just to let all of the, what do you want to call it, the population reports to populate because they don't populate until grades are pushed out, usually a day or two later. All right, PSA, like I said, huge chunk, over half a million. STC, 56,000. I believe their end result was something almost like 65,000 for the month. I know it was well over 60,000. And Beckett? 33,000, almost 34. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is shame on you, Beckett, shame. How is SGC grading more cards than you, but yet you're taking in submissions from card shows for bigger money, yet you have a backlog of 18 months plus, uh, you know, with a lot of these guys just starting to get their, I forget what they were called. I think it was a 20-day or 10-day levels. They changed the names of it like three times since COVID. But, I mean, it's just I, that's the only thing I can start thinking is that's just shameful that your numbers are that low. You've done nothing to increase production at all. Um, but yet you still have certain things open because, hey, let's get that bigger money in here so we can get more money in. The thing is, STC charges you right up front as soon as you get the money. Back at soon as they log that in their system, you're getting charged. PSA, not until I get my grades. I like that with PSA, but I know a lot of people are going to say, "Well, Mark's cards and you know all their side attachments and stuff like that." Hey, that's their, that's those guys not being able to manage their money. I like it like that. If somebody's going to sit on my cards for a year, why do I need to pay for it up front? Pay for it when the product's done. I mean, it just it makes better sense to me across the board. But I wanted to share this just so you guys could see it. You know, SGC's hitting some big numbers, way more in Beckett. I mean, I bet you they probably came close to doubling Beckett, you know, for the month of January and what they graded. It's just that Beckett has not increased anything at all. And as we're talking about, you know, the Fanatics takeover and everything, you know, and every, all these companies getting bought out, I can see Beckett eventually getting bought out by somebody because they're just, there's not a whole lot of care in the system with it at all. I mean, they're so far backlogged, but yet they still send their graders to shows. Why? Because they want to make the bigger money there. Hey, forget how little people would have their stuff out there. It's just the way it looks like to me. It's how you make yourself transparent by doing that. All right, let me put this down. Figure out which one's which here. All right. There we go. There's the numbers for the month of January. As you can see, a lot of stuff is really tamed down, like your Prism Zions and Marantz. You know, yeah, there's still a good chunk, but we're not seeing, you know, the 700 plus coming in PSA 10. And if you really look at this, Luis Robert was like, besides the Kyle Lewis, 
one of the most heavily, heavily graded cards, and where they came in PSA 10s. I want to draw your attention to about, was it two, four, six, about eight down. Luis Robert, tops rookie, all right? As you can see, the pop for the PSA 10s, 15,134. Percentage rate, 46.6, right? At the time of when I was doing this, 32,454 were graded. Huge numbers, huge. And if you guys remember, they were all just coming out of um, hangers and everything else left and right. Now, Grant, there was a lot of damage to those, and I'm guessing we probably would see higher numbers if people weren't, you know, using magnifiers and stuff like that now to help, you know, try to get the better submission rates. But just to bring this into perspective, the 89 Topps Trade Ken Griffey Jr., right, where you see like 12,770 PSA 10 rate, or, uh, uh, yeah, that's total number PSA 10, 16.6. Uh, percent for uh, PSA 10 rate, they've touched 76,480 of them. Now, I got 12 of them behind me that are real good PSA 10 candidates. But when you take that consideration to the Lou Bob, Topps rookie, little over, if you a little over double the amount there, but we haven't even begun to scratch the surface on that stuff coming in. And you've seen where they were up high now because them pop levels, they've really tamed down because there's just a big supply of it and there's really no demand. Same with the Topps Chrome. Topps Chrome, when I did mine, I did think I did mine economy level back in the day for like, what was it, 25, 30? I forget. It was cheap. That, that was, a you know... Um, a fair price out there for it. Now we're sitting at almost 13,000 of them with an 81.6% gem rate. I mean, it, you really can't send anything of those in unless they're value now to even try to make any money, but it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And I'm really curious where we're going to end up with how many 2020 tops Lou Bobs come into play. Huge numbers. All right, the three new inductees, the 2020 Kyle Lewis hit over 10. 2020 Toss Bichette, which we knew was going to happen in the 2019 Prison Barrett. I think as we move forward more into this, we're going to see a lot more of these numbers uh, growing at the bottom of the chart. At the same time frame, cards that were up high, like the Griffey, I think it was like number seven or eight for a long time ago. And you can just see the cards that have now passed it up in the food chain. Same with the Tiger Woods. It was a lot higher a long time ago in the food chain. It just it just starts bringing, you know, different thoughts into my head when I see that because those are two older cards and we see all these newer ones. My big thing is, when do we start grading 2020 select football that went retail? I can't wait to see the Herbert and Burrow pops. I, I, I bet you by this time next year, those pops are well way over 10,000 as PSA starts catching up. Now, granted, this is just PSA's numbers. We haven't even touched Beckett or SGC with those cards being graded. So there's definitely some huge, huge, huge numbers out there. But this is pretty much uh, all that were on there. I mean, I was trying to dig into some other cards and stuff. They had like pops of six, 7,000, so I didn't even put them on the list. and Because, you know, they're just ones that hit me in the back of the head. But until PSA opens up fully back up, I don't think we'll see those numbers explode. But if you guys are getting grades in and see something that's in the high counts and stuff, hit me up so I can add to this list. It's just really interesting to look at this. I mean, especially Akuna and Zylon, they're, they're in their own uh, realm now. They're in a 20,000 club member. I mean, it's like, wow, Soto will be there. Moran will be there. I think, well, Luke will definitely get there. Tatis will eventually get there because I think we're still going to see about 500 of those a month, uh, probably for the next two or three months because I'm sure everybody tried to filter those in real early before uh, PSA shut down. Just making sure I hit everything else here in my notes, guys. Looks like I did. All right, guys, I appreciate it. No overtime this week. I'll be back next week. I got to get up early for Saturday and drive up into Salem, Indiana for a card show. 
a uh, little drive. I think it's something like an hour and a half or something like that to get up there. So I'm going to get up there and walk around. Don't know what we'll pick up, but we'll at least get some video footage of a different show. Um, we'll see how many same dealers are at this show. I at least know three or four are going to it. But see if there's some more different inventory up there to go through, especially them uh, bargain bins. Um, i trying to think there is there something else that was going to hit me. I got another video I want to show. Uh, I believe it's coming in today in the mail. Uh, something that I'll probably talk about. And just to cut, I think it's just two cards coming in the mail. So I'll probably hold those off and just clip them into a longer, um, like mail month video, maybe something like that. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But all right, guys, you guys have a good one. Take care, and I'll catch you guys next video.